Hey everybody, welcome back. Hosman is here again, that's me, and I'm here to talk about Moon Knight once more. In case you're new to the channel, I am reading through every single appearance that Moon Knight has ever made. It's well over 400, so let's not hesitate and jump right into part three of the ongoing complete history of Moon Knight. This time he becomes an Avenger? Moon Knight's 72nd appearance was another ongoing series called The Fist of Khonshu, Moon Knight. The first few issues were written by our friend Alan Zalentes with art by Chris Warner, and it starts up and Moon Knight is no more. He is not Jake Lockley, he's not Stephen Grant, it's Mark Spector, and he is happy. Him and Marlene are happy, they're not doing Moon Knight stuff, they own some art museums and stuff. But of course, over in Egypt, there's some guy that's trying to mess around with the Khonshu stuff, and then Mark Spector is awakened in the middle of the night by a dream by Khonshu, and it's like, come... Figure this out, basically, is what he's saying. So Mark Spector's like, okay, I gotta go to Egypt. And Marlene goes with him to the airport and is like, I thought we were done with this. And he's like, yeah, but we're not, I guess. And she's like, no, I guess I'm done with this. And he's like, what are you saying? She's like, if you go to Egypt, I won't be here when you come back. And he's like, huh. Bye. He doesn't actually take it that lightly. But then he goes, he does, he has to go to Egypt. And he goes there and he finds this missing tomb of Khonshu. And inside are these... Really old priests, the priests of Kanchu, who he didn't know about before. And they're like, hey, check this out. Have a bunch of old new weapons. And he got some new weapons and a new look and a new costume with a, a mouthpiece on it that I don't actually like. And with that, he got new powers as well. He actually now does gain physical strength from the moon. So full moon, strong. New moon, not as strong. Daytime, also not as strong. But moon, strength. Mm. Yes. So of course he takes his new strength, he takes his new weapons, he beats up the bad guy named Anubis the Jackal. And that was Anubis' only appearance. So now we head over to Fist of Conchu number two, where he meets Arthur Harrow in his only appearance. I did a whole other video on that where I talked more about this issue than ever needed to be talked about, just because Arthur Harrow is a character in the Moon Knight series that's coming up, but I don't think it's related at all. So there's nothing really of note, just the priests of Conchu now kind of speak to Moon Knight and they're like, hey, go do this. They kind of lead him where he needs to be, and this time they send him to Central America to stop some human experiments. Then in Fist of Conchu number three, Morpheus is back, so we do get to see a familiar face and not a one-off villain. And it's Morpheus, and he kidnaps Marlene because he's like, I killed your brother, and there was history there. And Marlene's like, Mark Spector, help, you're the only one that can help me. And he's like, heck yeah, Moon Knight runs in, saves the day, gets the girl, things go back to normal, this is great. And the priests of Conjure are like, you're being selfish. And he's like, I guess I don't care, I'm going to do my own stuff, but also your stuff. So he argues with them a bit, and he goes, and he... Fights and he wins the day, and then Marlene's like, I'm going back to my ex-husband, so... Bye. Fist of Conchu issue 4 has Moon Knight take on some guy who is crazy in a Blackbeard costume, his only appearance ever. And then he confronts Marlene, and he's like, I'm gonna fight for this woman, so tell your ex-husband to move over, I'm gonna fight. This gentleman comes up in a wheelchair, and he's just the nicest guy, and he's like, Hey, I'm Marlene's ex-husband, we're kinda dating, and how are you? Pleased to meet you. If you're a friend of hers, you're a friend of mine. I am such a nice guy. And then after this issue, Alan Zalentes and Chris Warner are just gone. I don't know what happened. I couldn't really find out anything, but I'm sure they were fired or taken off the book. And that storyline is just completely dropped. This Marlene's ex-husband is never brought up again. <laughs> he never shows up, and it's like, well, there's going to be something interesting there, but nope. Which is fine. This series on a whole is kind of just better left as a footnote anyway. Issue number five, Joe Duffy comes on as writer. Uh, just like I said, plot lines are dropped. Nothing of consequence happens. Moon Knight beats up some bad guys that we never see again. Fist of Conchu number six, kind of same thing. We got Jim Owsley and Mark Beecham. Moon Knight goes, takes on a drug dealer named Mother White. Beats her up, saves a day, listens to the priests. Nothing much of consequence. They're all fine issues, but like, uh, like I said, on a whole, the Fist of Conchu series is not really worth reading. The six issues do their purpose of kind of showing the new direction Moon Knight is headed in, but... On a whole, like I said, they're not worth reading. You get the story from what happens in West Coast Avengers anyway. And then eventually this angle is dropped. Moon Knight next appeared in Marvel Age Annual number one. And I don't actually include this as an appearance because it was just a reprint of a couple pages from some of the Fist of Conchu stuff. And it was just a big hype book. Like, here's a couple pages of this. Here's a couple pages of this. Here's a page of Spider-Man. Here's some Wolverine. Just basically like, hey, if you're not reading any of these, here's a page or two of them to wet your whistle. So buy our books. And just reprinted issues. But Moon Knight was there. So Moon Knight's 78th appearance was in Marvel Fanfare number 30. It was written by Anne Nocetti <laughs> and directed by Brent Eric Anderson with cinematography by Al Williamson. Yes, I am reading that because I couldn't remember it. It's done in the style of a film. That's why the artist was a director and the cinematographer. I, I don't know what they were doing. Marvel Fanfare was one of those kind of things where they just did stories and experimented. It's a semi-generic Moon Knight tale, although I don't know exactly when it is set because he was Stephen Grant and he was with Marlene and they were on vacation and somebody was trying to film a movie and they were hurting the environment. This green lady came out of the woods and she was an earth elemental and Moon Knight saved the day. They took care of it. Nothing of consequence. Okay, so now for the first time I have to talk about issues that didn't have Moon Knight in them. 
because something that happened to them actually affects him. The West Coast Avengers were fighting this guy named Dominus and his crew, and then they got sent back in time, and they went to the Old West. Mockingbird ended up staying in the Old West, while the rest of them got sent back to ancient Egypt. Well, they went back to Egypt. The whole thing is a really good story that I should probably dive into in another day. The Avengers that did wind up back in ancient Egypt found themselves in the middle of a war between Rama Tut and Khonshu. Moving forward, I am going to talk a lot about the West Coast Avengers issues, which was a team book, obviously, so a lot of stuff was going on. I'm really only going to focus on the Moon Knight stuff unless it directly affects him. So some of these might go pretty quickly. In West Coast Avengers 21, Hawkeye died. Didn't intend to do that. Hawkeye apparently died. I think he might have just been knocked out. And Ramatut soldiers threw him and the other Avengers into the tomb of Khonshu, where the priests of Khonshu were, like from way back when. That's how old they were, apparently. Hawkeye dies at the feet of the Khonshu statue, and he speaks with Khonshu. And Khonshu's like, dude, help me out. Be my guy. Fight this war for me. And Hawkeye's like, Send me back to the future. And Conchu's like, I don't have that kind of power. He's like, well, figure it out, buddy. And Conchu's like, I got a plan. So Hawkeye agrees to help him. Conchu restores Hawkeye to life. Then, in 1987, seemingly out of nowhere, Moon Knight all of a sudden realizes he has to go to California. Go to California. In California, in West Coast Avengers number 22, Moon Knight confronts Hank Pym. And Hank Pym asks, how do I know you're Moon Knight? And Moon Knight's like, I don't have a driver's license I can show you, so they fight. A little scuffle ensues, and it's over, and Hank Pym's like, okay, you're Moon Knight, sure. And Moon Knight says to Firebird, take a look in your Bible. And in the Bible, a note falls out that Hawkeye had planted there while he was in the Old West in her great-grandmother's Bible. Like I said, it's a really good story that I should look into deeper on another day. West Coast Avengers number 23, the Fantastic Four join the whole thing, as Hank Pym, Firebird, and Moon Knight go to the Fantastic Four and ask to borrow their time machine. At this point, the uh, the Thing's playful dislike of Moon Knight seems to have been dropped. Thing actually has concern for his West Coast Avengers, as he was a part of the team shortly before this. And back in the past, Kanchu and the priests actually asked Hawkeye, said, can you make some weapons for us to fight this war? And Hawkeye made the weapons that were eventually passed down to Moon Knight. The weapons that the priests gave Moon Knight in the Fist of Kanchu series were made by Hawkeye, and that's kind of neat. But with the Fantastic Four's help, Moon Knight, Dr. Pym, and Firebird go back into the past and they save the other Avengers and bring them back to the future. There's a moment where Moon Knight's looking over at the priests and he's like, I, I know you guys, I met you guys in 1987, this is weird. And I just thought there was really some missed opportunities there for Moon Knight to actually like interact with Khonshu in the time of Khonshu. Maybe that's something that might come up in the future, I'm not sure. Something really cool happened in West Coast Avengers number 29, Moon Knight's 82nd appearance if you keep a track still. I mean, it's right here, so. The Avengers and their allies all get back to the regular time, and they go to fight Dominus and all his henchmen, and they beat the crap out of the henchmen. Moon Knight's confused by one guy whose name is just Cactus, and he is a cactus, but who wouldn't be confused by that? Anyway, Dominus gets the upper hand, and he blasts everybody with what he calls a brain blast? And it captures everyone's minds, and they are kind of just stuck. And they're all like, oh no, we're frozen, and then Moon Knight's like, whatever, and he walks out, and he walks up to Dominus, and he's like, smack. And Dominus is like, what? You can't break out of the brain blast, and he blasts him with another brain blast, and Moon Knight's like, sure I can, watch this, and boom, and he knocks him out. And Dominus is like, what? How? And Moon Knight's like, I'm not telling you my secret. Nor does he tell any of the other Avengers his secret, but it's because he has three minds. He's like, oh, that first brain blast took out Jake Lockley. The second brain blast took out Steve Grant. If he'd hit me with a third brain blast, we'd have been screwed. So it's a really playful way to bring up his three minds again. Next up is the West Coast Avengers Annual number two. And we have the annual West Coast East Coast Avengers softball game. Of course, no Avengers fun time can go off without a hitch. And the Grandmaster shows up and everyone dies. And then both teams while dead have to fight each other for their own lives and moon knight ends up beating up black knight and then the whole thing is kind of continued in avengers annual 16 but this time due to further shenanigans it's the entire assembled avengers team taking on the legion of the unliving and moon knight gets his ass absolutely handed to him by the green goblin but now back to the west coast with west coast avengers number 25 not a whole lot of moon knight stuff he kind of looks out and he ponders what it might mean to become an Avenger, and he, he's looking up at the moon. Now that I'm part of the Avengers, there's a chance I could go to the moon. Like, that's not out of the realm of possibilities. I'm a street-level guy, but now I'm an Avenger. And then he calls down Frenchie, and he goes up, and he's like, Frenchie, it's time for us to part ways. I'm with the Avengers now, and I don't need an entourage. And Frenchie's like, yeah, I completely understand. I'm going to take off to Nicaragua anyway. I'm going to get some mercenary action. So they part ways. In West Coast Avengers 26, the Zodiac is up to no good. That didn't work at all. Issue number 26 has the Zodiac show up, and they're, of course, up to no good. But Taurus kind of wants to turn on them and help the Avengers defeat them. And because of his study of astrology, Moon Knight believes him. Haas. You have to stop trying to sing the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme song with these West Coast Avengers titles. It doesn't work. I don't know if I can stop. But I'll try. In West Coast Avengers number 27, the Zodiac are still doing Zodiac stuff and the Avengers are fighting him. But Moon Knight and Tigra share a kiss and agree to see how it goes. 
In issue 28, Moon Knight's knowledge of astrology continues to help them fight the Zodiac, and they end up beating them and winning. Hooray! But Taurus goes back on his word to help them and escapes. And that's an insult to the Moon. So Moon Knight is pissed. Roger Stern wrote and Bob Hall drew Solo Avengers number 3, the B story, featured Moon Knight. And he's on the hunt for Taurus, and he goes to this castle and ends up fighting the Shroud. But the whole thing is just a big setup because the Shroud was like, I kind of led some crumbs to get you here because I wanted to test you out because I want you to join the night shift. It was this group of bad guys, but they weren't bad guys, but they were. And Moon Knight's like, no, I just joined the Avengers, so I can't go back on that. I can't join another team, you know? And the Shroud's like, actually, I wanted you to lead them. And Moon Knight's still like, no. And whether you realize it or not, you may have seen a panel from this issue before. It's the one where Moon Knight calls Dracula a big fucking nerd and says, give me my money, which never actually happened. The panel was from this issue and somebody else put words over it. In West Coast Avengers number 29, it seems that Moon Knight has made an ally in the Shroud as the Shroud gives him the location of Taurus. As Moon Knight battles Taurus across the city, we see within his mind that Mark Spector is battling with Jake Lockley and Stephen Grant to actively suppress them within his own subconscious. It's nice to see they're still going with that. So his fight with Taurus does end up in an airplane that he is kicked out of, and he ends up getting caught by Iron Man while the plane crashes and Taurus is seemingly killed. West Coast Avengers number 30 has the Avengers battling space robots in another dimension. As Moon Knight feels he's getting overwhelmed, Jake Lockley, Stephen Grant, and Mark Spector heads all pop up and say, We are in another dimension fighting robots. You're out of your league. But Khonshu comes out and says, you got this. Take a look around. We're in another dimension that is filled with moons, and you get your power from the moon, so dig in. And that's when Moon Knight feels it. He is stronger than ever, and he laughs maniacally as he tears the robots apart with his bare hands. West Coast Avengers number 31, Moon Knight is now having full-on conversations in his head with Khonshu as he and Tigra advance their relationship. And Moon Knight watches on with the other Avengers as Wonder Man battles Akron. Now we head over to Iron Man number 229 where the armor wars are fully underway and the Avengers go over to tell Iron Man to stop doing what he's doing and Moon Knight happens to be with them because he's with them. Marvel Fanfare number 38. Joe Duffy and Judith Hunt give us what is essentially the seventh issue of Fist of Conchu as Moon Knight takes on a boy band that is using a magical idol to steal the youth from their fans. Again with Marvel Fanfare number 39. Jake Lockley helps Moon Knight take out a terrorist? And then there is some casual racism. You better believe there's a video coming later about this one. West Coast Avengers 32, Moon Knight and Tiger are still a couple, and Khonshu is now kind of living inside Moon Knight's head. Now, as much as I do say I like to have Moon Knight, like, in the Marvel Universe, interacting with all these other heroes, um, the West Coast Avengers all go on a little mini vacation in their secret identities. So yeah, it's cool to see Moon Knight in these situations, but Mark Spector feels out of place, but maybe it was because he was wearing a weird white safari suit. Anyway, the Avengers fight a giant mutated pre-humanoid named Vetrikar, while Moon Knight and Mockingbird sneak off and do something else, but Moon Knight actually stops her from killing a guy, though he does admit he approves of her methods. In the 33rd issue of West Coast Avengers, Moon Knight's 97th appearance, Moon Knight is officially made the 24th Avenger, and then he gets very easily taken out by some guy named El Toro. Issue number 34, near as I can tell, it's right around here that Kanchu fully takes over Moon Knight. Mark Spector's gone, Jake, Steven, they're all gone too, and just Moon Knight is now Kanchu living inside of Mark Spector's body. And the issue gets really interesting because the Avengers are all captured and they're locked in this room and then his internal monologue, Kanchu was like, this room can't hold a god, I could break out of here anytime I want, but this experience is quite fun, so he doesn't. West Coast Avengers number 35, now Doctor Doom has the Avengers captured. It's, it's actually a nine-year-old boy version of Doctor Doom or something. Comics are weird. But he has the Avengers captured, but he doesn't really know Moon Knight or Tigra. So he's like, well, I'm going to put you guys into a battery of tests to see what I can figure out about you guys. They're essentially put in this danger room where just threats are coming at them from every angle. And they go for about an hour and a half before Moon Knight allows himself to be knocked unconscious so that Khonshu's spirit can go free. And the Khonshu goes and finds Doctor Doom and is like, I'm a god. Let the Avengers go. And Doctor Doom's like, I'm going to let the Avengers go, but it's not because you told me to. It's because I wanted to. And he lets them go. Dun, 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 dun. It's the 100th appearance of Moon Knight, by my calculations, in West Coast Avengers number 36. And nothing really special happened. Nobody else was counting. <laughs> uh, there's this guy named The Voice, and he can control people and tell them what to do. And he tells all the Avengers to kill Hank Pym. Hank Pym runs off and he's got a head start. But of course, Moon Knight cannot be told what to do, because right now, he is a god living in a man's body. So Kanchu's like... I'm not going to go along with this, but at the same time, I can't not look like I'm going along with it because I don't want the Avengers to know that I'm Khonshu and I've taken over their teammate's body. So he goes along with it, but not really. He kind of distracts a couple of the other Avengers because he does say, like, I can't let my fellow Avenger be harmed. So Khonshu himself 
feels like he's the Avenger in this situation. And these are his teammates. It's pretty fun. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. number two, was this close to being Moon Knight's 100th appearance. Thankfully it wasn't, because nothing really happens. Nick Fury is caught up in whatever he's caught up in, and some other S.H.I.E.L.D. agents go to the Avengers and they say, don't interfere in whatever's happening here. I didn't read it all, so I don't know. But just like that, they also say that to the West Coast Avengers, that Moon Knight is there. No words, just there. So in West Coast Avengers number 37, there's a big debate about killing and how Avengers aren't supposed to kill because way back in the Old West, Mockingbird actually accidentally killed the Phantom Rider. Not really, she led him to kill himself through an accident, but the Avengers aren't supposed to kill. But of course, Kanchu is a god of vengeance, so he's like, killing needs to happen sometimes. Mockingbird is a former S.H.I.E.L.D. agent and a spy, and she understands that sometimes killing is essential. And Tigra is a were-cat, so she's like, my primal instinct is to kill, to hunt. So the three of them actually separate from the Avengers and start their own mini-team. Which takes us to West Coast Avengers Annual number three, and stuff happens in the A story, but then there's the B story, which has Moon Knight. The trio of former Avengers actually go to the Savage Land to meet Kazar and his wife and kid, and Kanchu apparently doesn't like babies. They do battle with the High Evolutionary, and Kanchu is getting a little frustrated with the limits of a human body. He's like, I am a god and this body is human. Why does it have to be so human? Ah, damn this humanness, holding me back. And Tiger actually notices a little bit, she's like, eh, something a little off about you lately, Mark. West Coast Avengers 39, Mockingbird, Moon Knight, and Tiger are still off doing their thing, and they have a little discussion about how killing should work still. They don't want to do it all the time, but they do understand it's acceptable. And then they have a little fight with the Phantom Rider, and Kanchu again is like, oh man, this human body is weak and slow and I don't like it, but at the same time, fighting under these limitations is quite exhilarating, so he's having a good time with it. Steve Englehart and Al Melgram did, like, all the West Coast Avengers stuff, if I didn't mention that before, but... Marvel was moving in a new direction, and John Byrne was actually coming on, and I think Steve Englehart left. So some of the storylines kind of don't get followed up on, and it's a real shame when they do that, but like John Byrne at the time was like a celebrity in the comics world, and he's coming on to West Coast Avengers. Oh, it's a big deal. Just whatever. Get out of here, Englehart. So issue 40, Al Milgram still did the art, but Mark Grunewald did the writing. Uh, nothing really much happens. The the three former Avengers all, they're using the moon copter, so that's kind of neat, and they go to track down the shroud in the base that Moon Knight fought him in before, and they just kind of find some details and stuff. Nothing really happens. Tom DeFalco and Ralph Macho wrote the last issue we're going to look at today while Tom Morgan did the art. It's West Coast Avengers 41. And this one had a lot going on. To start off, these Egyptian god hunters started hunting down Norse gods, and that was tangential to what was happening. <laughs> the West Coast Avengers go, and they got to get the Phantom Rider to stop haunting Bobby, so they go to Damien Hellstrom to perform an exorcism on the guy who he's inhabiting right now, and they do that, they form the circle, and then these ghosts come out, and then at a moment where they're not looking, kind of Hellstrom zaps Conchu out of Moon Knight as well. He's like, we need a god to fight these ghosts. And Moon Knight is like unconscious, and Conchu's blasted out, and he's like, you ghosts stop fighting right now, and takes care of that, and then all of a sudden these Egyptian god things sent by Seth show up, and everybody just starts fighting everybody. And they actually rip all the gold stuff off of Moon Knight and make his costume kind of back to the more classic look we were used to, thus signifying an end to this era. And everybody wins and stuff, and Kanchu's like, okay, well, I'm gonna go deal with these gods, man. I might die. So Moon Knight, just keep doing what you're doing in my name, but it's time for me to leave you alone for a bit. I took your body. I had a good time. You paid the price. That was bad, I guess. Whatever. Bye. And then Moon Knight's like, well, shit. I just came face to face with my god, and I'm not sure I liked who it was, but, uh, so I'm gonna leave the Avengers. And Tigra's like, um, hey, remember me? And Moon Knight's like, I'm leaving you too, bye. It's not really stated, it's kind of subtly hinted upon that Tigra was more something that Kanchu was doing, and Mark Spector wasn't, even though when it started, it was very clear, like, Mark Spector even told Kanchu, like, nah, man, you just don't understand some things. Mm-hmm, I want to have a relationship with a cat woman. But it seems like by the end, Moon Knight, Mark Spector was just like, uh, maybe he was just completely addled in the brain and was just like, I gotta get out of here. But it seemed like, he was like, he's he, get your hand off me, he says to her at one point. Like, it seemed like the relationship was Conchu's. Which is weird, because Tigra also, much later during Secret Invasion, would have a relationship with Hank Pym, who was a Skrull. So she's continually having relationships with people she doesn't think she's having relationships with. That's something for down the road if I do the complete history of Tigra. Anyway, yes, Moon Knight and the Avengers part ways. So there you have it, another 30-some issues of Moon Knight. Uh, he had his time with the Avengers, and it was kind of just there. Uh, I'm not going to say nobody quite understood the character or anything. He was written pretty consistently, but at the same time, he is just a space holder. There are interesting things they could do with him, and they start touching upon them. For the most part, everybody's kind of just like, okay, he's a guy who fights crime. 
and he's got some mental issues. His place on the team could have been held by anybody. They did some really interesting stuff with the Kanchu, but then, yeah, like it was dropped pretty quick. It's a shame Steve Englehart couldn't maybe see through what he was planning on doing, and maybe that's exactly what it was. Maybe somebody comes back to it in the future. I don't know. But yeah, if you enjoyed this at all, there is more coming. I still have 300-some issues of Moon Knight to read, so please subscribe for when the future stuff comes out. I also do other videos and fun little shorts. The music, again, uh, was the Clerics of Ohm. There's just some amazing stuff they do. Please go check out their channel, and I will catch you next time. If you enjoy just a little more Hossman, I do have a gaming channel that I put very little effort into. It's called Hossman Gaming. You can find me there. TikTok, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. Links are all below. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this, and have a wonderful day. Till I see you again, farewell for now from Hoss. Bye-bye.